Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 75. I was about to say 175. I mean, that would be quite a podcasting career, wouldn't it? That would just be too much. Welcome to episode 75 of the Crochet Circle podcast. I am waving. Hello, my friends. I hope you are all very well. I am fresh back from Austria, which is why the podcast is a week late, because I can't be trusted with the dates. And I honestly booked the holiday thinking I was set up on the right timeline for doing the podcast still in its normal, like, transit. But no, no, no. I'm rubbish with dates and increasingly it's getting worse as I get older. So apologies. We're a week late, but um, it is what it is. I was off gallivanting, having fun um, out of the country, up in the mountains. Um, But I am back and refreshed. So before I get into the podcast properly, I want to give you a quick heads up so that you all hear this bit. Um, This Sunday, the 10th of April, I will be doing an Instagram live with Claudia from Crochet Luna. I promised that when I changed up the format of the podcast a little bit and stopped doing all the show notes, that I wanted to use that time to have more of an effect within the community. And so the first Instagram live chat is this Sunday, the 10th of April at 8pm British summertime. Claudia and I will go live and the whole concept is that we are just sitting as two friends, having a bit of a chat, nothing really formal and we just see where the conversation takes us. If the audio works out, because this is the first one I will have done, If the audio works out, then I will also upload it. I will save the file and I will upload it as an audio version um, for the podcast. So that will go out soon after. And for those of you that want to see the video side of it, it will go onto my grid on Instagram. And the plan is that every other month, every month, whenever, when there's somebody that I want to chat to, We will jump on Instagram Live and we will have that chat and then it will be available to those that can't join us live. Um, It will be available through other channels. So this Sunday, 10 o'clock, I'm so pleased to be kicking this off with my lovely friend Claudia. Um, We've been friends for many years now and we always have really good chin wags. So I hope you can come and join us on Instagram at crochet underscore circle underscore podcast. I thought today I would actually put a shawl on for recording because I don't often, like I wear my shawls quite a lot when I'm out and about, but I don't often wear them for recording the podcast. So I'm using a slightly different um, headphone microphone. Like (laughs) My head, I think, is still in holiday mode. So apologies. Let's see how this is going to pan out today. Um, I'm using a slightly different microphone today. So that I can wear a shawl and so that it's not brushing up against it because this shawl has got um, mohair floof in it, which I know from bitter experience impacts the microphone. So I thought I would swap it out today and see how we go with that. Um, But the shawl I'm wearing is the Maya shawl, which is a pattern that was done for Inside Crochet by Helda um, Panagri. Really lovely design. I fiddled with it a little bit, obviously. Um, and changed the stripe sequence but it is a flu- it's got some floof in it and floof I think is like the common theme of today's podcast because I am now obsessed with it. Right first up I have a very quick old dog new tricks because it's one that I just taught myself this morning. This shawl that I'm wearing the Maya shawl has got really quite a deep V on it and quite a quick increase And if I was to just wear it using the full um, depth of the shawl, it comes quite far down and looks like it's pointing at something that I don't really want my shawl to point at. It's like a bit of an arrow saying, look here. So to change it up a little bit, um, what I have done, and I've never done this before and it suddenly came to me, you can either fold down the very top of your shawl or just roll it up a little bit until it is the depth that you want it to be. And then if you place it around like you would normally wear a triangular shawl, what it means is, it's really quite a handy tip, 
you've um, shortened the depth of it so it's not pointing somewhere I don't want it to point where it is but not in such a very obvious way um, it's also created a lot of the weight up at the top of the shawl so it, I've been wearing it like this all morning and it doesn't want to fall off because it means I've added weight to the ties at the sides which I then tuck under but I've added more of the bulk of the weight up to the very top um, so it's not dragging down and also because I really like trying to keep the back of my neck warmth for overall warmth so I don't have to wear hats all the time it means a lot of that bulk is then neatly around my neck so it's been lovely and snuggly to wear this this morning um, and it's probably my newfound way of wearing um, v-neck shawls so I can get the wood the yeah the like the arm span of them that I like because I like a big big shawl um, but I don't necessarily want it to be really deep so this is a really good trick just roll it up a little bit at its longest point and then shunt it round your neck and it does all the things you want it to do it's been one of those months where um, most things like haven't necessarily worked out the way I wanted them to um, like you know like some sometimes you just get a string of projects that aren't just quite right for various reasons so um, I've been doing quite a lot of commission work that is all crochet so some of the personal stuff that I've been doing is knitting because I'm trying to not just crochet all the time for my hand which is still giving me some um, some issues so the things that I've been knitting on the, and this is one of my like, absolute disaster things it's not an absolute disaster but <laughs> yeah, it's not great it's a cabled hat I really love the effect of cables and knitting and I like-ish some cabled effect in crocheting, not all of it though, um, because I think it can be a bit angular and a bit rigid. Um, and so I picked this hat pattern thinking it, it looked like a really easy cable to be able to, to do. And nominally it is, but there was quite a lot of cable work in it. I, I don't know why I thought it would be easy. I think if you're used to doing cables, crochet or knitting, then it would probably be easy, but it really taxed my brain. And um, I couldn't be bothered to put the second um, repeat of cables in because that would have made a hat that I thought was going to be too long for me, and it would have been. And also, like, I just lost the will to live with this hat. Um, <laughs> and it looks tiny, like it looks like it would fit a toddler. But it has an awful lot of stretch with it. But the problem is when you stretch it out to fit it on your head, you kind of minimise the amount of height that you've got to play with. So I'm going to pop it on, but it, it just looks ridiculous. Like It's tiny. It barely even covers the top of my ears. And I quite, I quite like a short beanie hat, but <laughs> this is like beyond the pale. It's just no. It's just not happening. So I'm going to find a worthy home uh, for this hat. Because I really like the yarn that I was working with. It's a very pale grey with a kind of mid-grain. It's got little blips of like rust and red and uh, blue and purple in there. Like very subtle. From afar it just looks like a grey hat. But actually closer up you're able to see some of the texture that you get from the, the different colours. Um, the yarn is from Lola at Third Vault Yarns and this is Deep Stash. I have had this in my stash I think since about maybe 2016. Um, I handpicked it when she was vending at um, Fibre East years back. And it is, um, I don't think, so I don't think she's got it anymore, but it was her Caroline DK. It is 100% superwash merino, and the colourway was Mind Palace. It was from one of her Sherlock Holmes kits. So, I was so, like, I was so pleased that I was pulling stuff out of deep stash. But then, <laughs> what I've done is spent a number of hours, and I, like, hours, 
a number of hours making a hat that I can't wear. But I will I will pass it on to somebody else that can wear it. Um, because there's no way I'm pulling it out. It was hours worth of work. Um, and I could add the other repeat, but pff, I'm just not going to. So this will find a new home and I will do something else with the amount that I've got left. But that very much set up for the way the rest of my month would work with projects. So project one that was done and is of absolutely no use to me. So on the back of that, I was out at a yarn retreat with some friends and we went to Northern Ireland, which is always home from home for me. I love being in Northern Ireland. It reminds me of the southwest of Scotland. It's very similar. The um, the humour is very similar. <laughs> Sarcastic. And um, like the countryside is similar. It's just beautiful. I really love Northern Ireland. And we were quite far over west, over by Inniskillen. And the yarn retreat was on a little island with a a hotel called Lusty Beg and the retreat was um they're gonna they're gonna run another one. It was by Inspiring Yarns. So if you're if you're up for a yarn retreat, um that might be one that you're interested in. And this dodgy hat, the cabled hat that I um didn't end up making for me is actually called um, Tide Knots it's a free pattern on Lovecrafts by um, Justina Lurkowska um, and I knew that that hat wasn't going to work out for me pretty much on the plane home but before that the four of us that all went out on the retreat agreed that we were going to make a cabled hat that <laughs> we would all want to make and so what we found was um, a really simple one by uh, a designer and a company called Garntour. I've linked to it in the linked show notes. But the reason I want to show you this one is because, one, it's a much better fit. So I am like capable of making myself a cabled hat that I like. But I really want to show it to you because I made it out of some cashmere that I had and I added in a strand of mohair silk. I just had a random little nugget left over um, from somewhere and like I know the whole two-stranded silk and um, silk and mohair thing has been about four years. I'm just very late to jump on the, the train for it um, because, because I'm just like that basically. If there's a fuss going on over here, I'll be at the opposite end of the room just doing my own thing. And then I'll come to you years later and go, this is the best thing ever. Why did I not do this earlier? So the hat is um, Lang Cashmere Lace, which is so unbelievably soft. And again, this is deep stash. I have had this for a number of years. Um... Matthew bought it for me as a present, not that he knew he was buying it for me as a present, when he had um, his old band turn up and be at the house for the entire weekend doing a 48 hour recording challenge. And I was so like annoyed by having that many people in our house over the, the course of the weekend that I bought myself a lot of stuff from Lovecrafts, including some cashmere. So it was a present, it was a unknown present from Matthew. That's in a kind of dark grey and I paired that with a dark grey mohair and the result of that means that I have a really warm hat which is only I think it's about 30 grams in total so it just weighs nothing and it's so warm and I just I absolutely love it. What that means is that then when I went to Austria, I sent me on a little floof mohair silk spiral because I just want to add it to all the things. So I am today wearing a mohair jumper. I've obviously got my Maya shawl on, crocheted up, which has got mohair in it. And my little mohair hat. The, the floof is amazing. I, I just think it's ridiculous. I'm so late to this party, um, but I'm, I've made up for it. Don't worry. <laughs> So um, I'll link to both those hats in case anybody wants to try a simple cable hat. I really love the cable cap one that I did from Garntour because it actually only has one, two, three 
cable rows in it. So that's the only three rows that you're using a cable needle with, which is what really slows it up. Um, and yeah, it, I think the pattern was like £2.80 or something ridiculous. And it's a nice little pattern. I will make more of these. Um, then what else did I do? Like I said, I've had um, crochet commissions, which I can't share with you. And so therefore a lot of knitting. But I also finished off for Matthew a pair of socks because he's now wearing more and more homemade socks which makes my heart beat a little bit faster because it makes me so happy and the ones that I made him I just always pretty much make a standard vanilla sock because I know that they work and we like them and um, I just did contrast in a kind of composty brown um, cuff and toe and quite a nice bright mossy green for the heel and then the main colour is this gorgeous dark rainbow colour which is called Gothbow and the colour is by Giddy and Yarns and I can show you that in the ball because I have some left because I'm also going to make myself a pair of these oh it's right in front of me sorry um, it's pretty much like a bit of an oil slick that's all the colours that you get in and it's quite dark um, I honestly thought it was going to work up a little bit brighter but I don't mind the fact that it didn't um, so I really enjoyed working with that it was kind of standard fingering weight sock I think it was 80-20 um, merino nylon but this is one of those um, colourways that if you're not a fan of colour pooling this is in short sharp enough um, colour repeats that this wouldn't colour pull with crochet so if you're looking for a dirty rainbow that's um, a variegated scheme but it won't colour pull then I think that goth bow by Gideon Yarns is a really good option for you um, so that was yeah another another finished object gone for somebody else I'm quite enjoying making bits and pieces for other people at the moment. I think because I I just love making. I was thinking about this while we were away at the yarn retreat. I was having a uh, a chat with my friend Sam. She's very much a uh, um, process crafter. She loves just going through the process, learning new techniques. Um, she's not so much about the finished product like a she rarely, I think, wears the things that she makes. I think more so accessories and stuff she wears. But she makes a lot of garments. And she just really loves the act of crafting. And um, whilst I do really like wearing the stuff that I make, I could never wear all of the things I make. So I'm trying to maybe make a few more bits for other people. Whereas previously I would have told you like I would just really make things for myself. I'm opening up the the people that are worthy of me spending time on, um, I think. And it feels quite nice. It really does. Let me show you some bits and pieces that I am still working on. While we were away in Austria, I spent a lot of my time, my crafting time, was spent on my Frida shawl. I love the geometric patterns on this. So it is a triangular shawl and it's made up of triangles um, within the um, colour work design. And it's always worked on the right side so you end up with lots of um, kind of cut ends. And oh, I just really enjoyed like the geometric nature of this shawl. Um, one of the triangles is striped and then the next triangle has got like a grid square on it so it's it's really pleasing and the formula that it works to is really pleasing as well now i probably could have got this shawl finished and um, this month to show you but i thought what i would actually do is hold off because i now know that there's no way that i'm going to stick with the tassel option for this shawl as much as like I would love to be a tassel person and a pom-pom person I just don't think I am I I just think the less 
is more thing is speaks to me better. So I know that I'm not going to keep the tassels and I'm going to not weave them in but kind of trap them down as I add. But I thought I would show you the shawl before I add the border so that you can see um, the tassels and how the fringing looks. This is pre-blocking and because I was holding my yarn double I've kind of got two strands of tassels where most other folk would only have one so my tassels are probably a bit more um, prominent anyway. But my plan is to block this out, make sure that I get a really good um, even triangle out of it because at the moment it's skewing to one side. I think that's just because you're always working on the right side so it introduces a little bit of slope but that's something that wet blocking will take out of it. And then I will be adding the border but I want to add the border when it's in its best possible state. Um, because it's going to come down, I think it goes through all three sides and that will allow me to trap um, all of these little tassels down and then I'll have a lovely clean edge of one of the colours of my shawl. So um, the main colour is a dark charcoal grey and the contrast colour is a sagey green colour, um, quite a light sagey green colour. And I just, I love the amount of contrast I've got with this. I'm really, like, you're never going to see me not using autumnal earthy colours, ever. I'm really kind of aiding towards some soft neutrals as well, paired with charcoal. Um, very much always on a charcoal vibe anyway. But So what I don't know with this shawl is, should I finish it off with the charcoal grey or with the sage green and I think I might do a little test with both and see which one I actually prefer. I might I might put it to the vote on Instagram and see what your see what your thoughts are for it. Um so definitely come next podcast, come episode seventy six, um this will be a finished object and I will most likely as long as this um microphone, I nearly said microwave, microwave, as long as this microphone works um, well, then every time I want to wear a shawl on the podcast, I will use that instead. So this will be finished next month, just in time for all the warm weather, <laughs> obviously. Um, but I don't care, it will be there and ready for next season. But this, oh, the geometric print on this is just... Fabulous. This is the Frida Shawl by Jeanette at Air Crochet. Love it. Love it, love it. And the um, discount code, I'll link it again, is live until the end of April. So Jeanette has given you lovely watchers and listeners 20% off this pattern. Thoroughly recommend it as a pattern. Um, I know some people that have done it twice. And um, I th I said when I was picking the yarns for this, I thought it would work best with some deep contrast colours. But actually, Claudia, um, Sunbird Crochet, did a version with two soft neutral colours. So um, the contrast was a lot less obvious. And it worked beautifully. Like, I would totally ate my words and told her that I did. Because um, it just looked really lovely with those very soft um, pinky peachy tones that she used so if you're thinking about making the Frida shawl and you didn't have really obvious contrast colours take a look at Claudia's Instagram Sunbird Crochet because actually she had a really lovely version that was far less um, kind of high contrast than mine is but I also think you could go like super clashy with this you could go like red and orange or purple and orange and it would look amazing because of the geometric um, nature of the pattern. Um, so while I was away I also started working on a pair of shepherdess socks. These are by Clarissa Beth Lopez Rodriguez who you will all know as um, Crochet Cupcakes on Instagram. Lovely Clarissa Beth and she did the shepherdess socks for Murit issue one. And I was looking for another pair of crocheted socks to make and it suddenly struck me and I was like, well, why am I not just making Clarissa Bits? 
And so that's what I um, started hooking up. Now, this was while I was away, so I only packed a 3.25mm crochet hook with me, which is what the pattern suggests. And then I already had the other hook size that it needs, which is a 4.5mm hook. I already had that in my bag for my Frida shawl. So I thought, I'm all set, this is good. But obviously I have very different... Um, very different tension from Clarisabeth. So I got so far down and then I looked at my little mouse hat and thought there's no way that that is going to fit on my foot properly. The main body of the sock is crocheted using slip stitches which whilst that gives you rather a lot of give vertically it gives you very little give around the circumference of your foot. So I really need to make sure that I get the gauge right for the foot circumference in particular. And so I have kept that one there for you, broke the yarn off, so you can see um, why it is that yet again another project that I haven't just quite got right and I've had to start again with. It's just, it's just going to be too tight and it will make them very restrictive, especially if when I need them to give vertically, that's going to take even more of the circumference give away from them. So that will make the negative ease on the circumference of the sock even worse. So it was a definite have to start again. And so I just started these um, last night, basically. So I'm not very far. I've got a couple more rounds to do on the toe, but already they are a decent amount um, larger. I moved up 0.5 millimeter up to a 3.75 mil hook and that means I will most likely go up to a 5 mil for the main body of the socks so they will actually work up quite a lot more quickly as well which is good. So the yarn that I'm using for my Shepherdess socks by Clarissa Beth is a merino tweed and it is by Eden Cottage Yarns I've been meaning to buy some Eden Cottage yarns for long enough and just I wanted to make sure I had like a project in mind and Laura who works for Eden Cottage had shown me a pair of socks that she'd crocheted up in um, in this tweed and I was like oh, okay God, now it's time now it's time to buy some Eden Cottage and I'm so pleased I did because it's 85% merino and 15% Donegal tweed and they're in neps basically. So what that means is that the main body of the yarn is the merino and that is in a rich peachy brown colour. The colourway is called compost. And then the neps are like extra little bits of fibre that are added in. And the neps in this one in particular are um, a kind of a warm cream oatmeal colour and a dark char charcoal black colour. So as you work them up, you can probably it's it's best seen in the um, in the main body of the sock. As you work up the whatever fabric you're creating, you get these little pops, but they don't look like sprinkles do on hand dyed yarn because you can see that there's a texture to them as well. So it's quite a different looking fabric when you add something with. Um, neps to it and I can tell you this um, this yarn the Eden Cottage compost yarn is a really high twist it is an absolute dream to crochet with because it doesn't split and it is so lovely and soft like I um, I don't mind merino I don't I don't totally love a uh, superwash merino you've heard me talk about it before the neps for me make it more interesting rather than just a standard um, two-ply yarn. But this is, like, the moment I handled it, I was like, oh, you're a bit different. Sometimes with the superwash yarn, you can feel like the the film that's on it. And I, I really don't like it. This doesn't feel like that. This has just like a real lovely softness to it. I am impressed like I really like it so I'm holding out for having a really lovely warm pair of shepherdess socks and I'm just I think um crocheted socks have moved on like the designs have moved on so much in the last five years there's a, a real knowledge base that has grown around 
getting a good fit and getting the right stitch um, for a good comfortable fit on your foot. So um, I'm going to make it a bit of a mission to crochet up more socks over the coming uh, months, I think. Also, we have just taken stock of a quarter allotment, which is a huge amount of space um, just down the road from us. And so I need another pair of crocheted socks for my car wellies because I keep a pair of wellies in the car just, just for odd occasions. And I want to have a pair of um, socks sat in those wellies. So my shepherdess socks are going into the car wellies and they are then my allotment wellies. So these will get a lot of use um, and keep my feet nice and toasty when I'm up digging over the allotments and watering in generally. Growing all of our vegetables, hopefully, for our household, which is what we're trying to do. Um, I will link to this yarn in particular for Eden Cottage, so you can see. I cannot tell you how many years I have been waiting to buy this particular colour of yarn, because Victoria dyes it across a lot of their um, different yarn blends. That compost, I remember seeing her compost yarn probably back in... Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2016 and I didn't buy it then um, I know on face value it probably looks like I just go and buy loads of yarn willy nilly but like I genuinely don't, I have like purposefulness for all of it and I wanted to make sure that I had um, a proper reason for getting compost finally and sometimes it's good to say no to yourself until you really really want something let me give you a quick rundown on some designs in progress because Mood It 2 is due out and I happen to have my copies here ready so if you haven't got your copy yet I still also have copies of Mood It 1 so I know Alison has now sold out so if you're looking for copies of Mood It 1 and you want Mood It 2 then I've got them in the shop I will link to them in the show notes and there is so much good stuff in there. It is very garment heavy, which is great. Um, and let me just show you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? So we've got, there's a lovely top in there from Claudia. Um, I think the first thing that I'm going to make out of here is the, I don't know how to pronounce it because I'm rubbish, but I think it's ETL. And that is by Ines Rogers. Hello, Ines. Really lovely. Again, like it's brown. I just love, <laughs> I love this colour of brown. Really nice brown um, jumper with kind of three-quarter length sleeves. There's so much good stuff in this. And, of, and on the front is Jeanette Air Crochets. Like, it's got so many designers that I, uh, I love in here. Um, it, it's just fab. And also in there, when I find it, is my drift bag. So this is due out at the end of April. And when Alison sent me my wholesale copies, she also sent me back my drift bag. So I thought I would just show off on this podcast because, um, because I have it back. Um, for this design, I have used two different yarn brands. The CG green colour is um, Wiku Yarns, <laughs> I had to think about that. And then the Rust and the um, Undyed are mini skeins from Rivernets. And then I have just used leather straps that I've sewn on. They are literally lengths of leather. Little poppers on the side and a little strap in the middle. Now, the, one of the reasons I wanted to show you this is quite often with colour crochet work, particularly if you're working it in double crochet, you end up with little um, legs out of the contrast colour and it looks a bit like colour bleed and it's not really like super neat. So I didn't want that for a colour work bag and so I worked up a new technique um, which uses half treble crochets and it means you don't get the colour bleed. And you get this like super neat colour change from one into the next. And I'm really, pr I'm really proud of the technique. Do you know what? I'm just going to let poop poop toot my own horn. I'm really proud of working up that technique because 
I love colour work crochet but I am not a fan of the colour blade and this does away with that. The other thing that it does is it gives you a really dense fabric. So if you're not a fan of um, like sewing liners for bags, you can get away with not lining this bag out because the fabric is so dense. Like crochet hooks wouldn't fall through it, pencils wouldn't fall through it. It is a dense um, fabric that you get from it. I had a love-hate relationship with this bag as I was making it and I'm now background to love which happens with pretty much all of my designs I'm sure other designers I mean I know because I've spoken to other you go through this um like creativity at the beginning you're like this is amazing I love what I'm doing and then when you're like a good portion of the way through the design and coming to the end of it you think it's absolute crap and then when you pull it all together you still either think it's absolute crap or you fall back in love with the design but it's it it makes the act of designing really difficult because the um crisis of confidence that you get in the middle of a project can really floor you like properly floor you um and luckily most of my stuff is to deadline which is what actually keeps me going on with the projects but that's I'm sure why I've got so many projects that I've dumped along the wayside because you just get this middle part of the project where you just can't stand the thing that you're working on because it feels like it's never going to come together as the vision that you had in your head. Luckily, I now love drift bag again very much. So this is coming out with me this summer. This will be one of my um, handbags I will use this summer and lots more crochet bags are coming your way. But for now, drift is only going to be available in Murit issue 2 which is in my shop, or you can get direct from Alison. If you're not already signed up to my Provenance Craft Co. newsletter, because I sell a few other crafting titles as well, um, like issue-based ones, basically if you're signed up to the newsletter, then what I tend to do is give you 10% off if you're ordering two or more um, issues. So that's the first time that would apply to Murit. So... Um, yeah, if you're not already signed up, then get signed up to that newsletter. I will provide a link in the show notes. Um, what else do I have? Finally, finally finished and photographed my fall into winter blanket, which I think I may have shown you last time round, but I wanted to show you it photographed and I'll pop this up on Instagram as well when it's been launched. This will be launched at Wonderful Wheels with John Arbor and Textiles. So I did the final draft on the tech edit yesterday. Um, Deb is working on it as we record so that I can get it out. And hopefully what that means is lovely patrons, you will be getting a free copy of this um, blanket pattern on Friday. Hopefully if I've got it all back tech edited and done, then this will be hitting your patron drop box um, this week as a nice little kind of thank you for being a patron. Um, so look out for this. Wonderful Wheels is the third week in April. So that's when this pattern will be launching. It's a very well-travelled blanket. It went up every mountain that I went up in Austria. It um, went to the lakeside. It went everywhere. <laughs> I have photos of me photographing the blanket at the top of the mountain. It is a very well-travelled thing and it kept me warm at the top of the mountain when I was doing some crochet, working on my Frida shawl as well. So, yeah, nice and warm. I have a stash of yarns in front of me. And um, because obviously I went to... I was abroad, I was in Austria, and the weekend before that I was in... Um, Northern Ireland and you know it was a yarn retreat and uh, and uh, Tracy one of the people responsible for the yarn retreat also has a really lovely shop in the Inniskillen in a beautiful little courtyard in a like a stone what might have been like an old stone byre or something um, nice little yarn shop and she's an indie dyer um, and the yarn shop is called You Mama 
Uh, and it was just so nice. We went in there on the Sunday on the way back to the airport. So things were purchased. So I'm going to quickly take you through all the bits and pieces that I got. So there were other bits and pieces that I got from you, Mama, but I don't need to show you them yet. Um, but I did get a couple of her hand-dyed skeins for socks. Um, the first is in very muted earthy tones. What a surprise. And the base is um, Ultimate Sock, which is 75% Blueface Leicester, 25% Nylon. And the colourway is called A Forest. And it just spoke to me. Greens, peaches, greys, browns, just like proper forest um, floor colour, which is lovely. Um, and when we, on our way to the Arn Retreat, I took Charlie and Beck and Sam up on a forest drive which looks up over Loch Ern and this so this was like a little souvenir of that forest drive up through Loch Ern. The other colourway that I got from Tracy was it's on her titanium sock which is 75% superwash and 25% nylon and it is called worn out leather and it is dark grey with like an overwash of a uh, browny red on it which is really subtle comes out in little speckles but in general it just has affected the colour of the grey which is nice um, and again that's more socks because I just love knitting and crocheting socks and I have quite a few people in my family that um, like my handmade socks so and I can get um, if I do contrast heels and toes particularly with knitted socks I could get usually two pairs of socks out of a 100 gram skein. So for me, I think that's pretty good value for money. I will link to you, Mama, in the Mama, in the show notes so you can see um, Tracy's shop. But if you're ever over that way, definitely drop in because there's a little treasure trove of, um, of a shop. And I'd nearly finished. I'd done one purchase and then I saw that she had toffed pom-poms so at the retreat they had some of those big faux fur pom-poms the handmade ones but they were really big which um i was originally thinking that this would go on top of my stupid little cabled hat which i hadn't yet finished um and then i thought well it might go on the top of my second cabled hat and it would look very cool but again i just don't i'm I'm just not convinced that I'm a pom pom person. I just, I don't. I'm gonna try it on the hat and see how I go with it. But the reason I wanted to show it to you is because this is honestly the nicest pom pom I have ever felt. Um, and I'm like, if I had to put a pom pom on stuff, tough pom pom would be the one that I would use because it is super fluffy. It's made from alpaca. And I actually thought it was a pretty good price at £8 for something that is made from alpaca. It's made in um, made in Peru. And it's basically, from what I can feel, it's got like an inner part which looks like it's polyester from the ball band. And then somehow they managed to pull the alpaca fibre through it. But it is ju it's just proper floof. It's just like lovely. Nicest pom-pom I've ever touched. So... If you're looking for a really nice, good quality pom-pom, um, I would say the Toft ones. And I know quite a few yarn shops now sell these and you can get them directly from Toft, but also Tracy at you, Mama has them so you can pick them up from her. Um, like I really, really wish I liked pom-poms more than I do, but it's just like, it's a layer too far for me. Maybe someday I'll get over it, but it won't be any time soon. Um, so then there's the stuff that I bought in Austria so yarn shops I visited in Austria were quite interesting I managed to get to um, one very quickly because they were shutting and were basically pushing me out the door um, so that was in Innsbruck and then I managed to go to one in Salzburg and one in Vienna and they were all very different but what um two of them had in common is that they both had the same yarn companies as their main suppliers and those companies were 
Lana Grosser, which is a Swiss company, and most, if not all, of their production happens in Italy. So in terms of like carbon footprint of your yarn, that's actually quite small. And then there was also Lang Yarns, which is a German company. And wh- why I'm pointing this out to you is because it was really interesting. It's like, I think, yarn shops used to be in the UK where Rowan was maybe the main um, commercial outlet for for yarn. And they had, Rowan used to have loads of different types of yarn available in a decent colour palette. And about five years ago, they reined it all in, reduced their, um, their range and reduced the colour palette. Now, that's fine. But when I walked into these yarn shops, they had so many different types of yarn available and the colour palettes were amazing and the pricing point is really quite good as well. Um, And I was just like, kid in a sweet shop. I absolutely loved it. And I'm often on the lookout for yarn brands that are affordable, that have got an environmental policy that they work to and that... Um, are producing closer to home and I was really impressed with Lang and Lana Grossa. Now I was also speaking to Claudia about it and she reckons that um, Lang yarns are good but um, probably that Lana Grossa is better. She's based in Germany so these are some of the yarns are readily available to her in yarn shops as well. Um, Both types of yarn are available in Lovecrafts they don't have the full range because I'm the full range is absolutely massive, really huge. Um, but they have got some. So if you've never tried these brands before, I would say give them a go. Like I went through the shop and I was touching most of them just to see how the yarns were, um, whether they were soft to touch, whether I would want to work with them. And I honestly was p- really pleasantly surprised. I think one of the reasons that I've been put off these yarns in the past is when you go on to Love Crafts, I think the photos that they've used for Lana Gross and for Lang are not great. They don't make me want to work with them. And they've chosen really vibrant colour palettes to push the brand. And it just, it, they're not my colour, so I'm not drawn to them. But having seen them in the shop and having seen some of the ones I bought, they do do my earthy um colour palette as well but I've just not seen them because I've never been attracted to it on Lovecrafts. So I will be like I'm actually wondering about going to Lana Grossa and asking them for yarn support for some projects that I've got coming because I do want to use the more commercial end of the kind of yarn spectrum as well. But I need a good affordable option and I I think between Lana Grossa and Lang, I've probably got that. So you might see me doing more with these brands in the future. What I did pick up were four 25 gram um, sets of their Super Kid Mohair with silk, which is lovely. Um, I think these worked out at something like £5.50 per 25 grams. That is about half the price of the Rowan version of this. So you can see that the pricing point is really quite decent. And I picked it up in a reddish orange colour, a bronzy gold colour, two of those, and a forest green. And I have got plans for this for a little super secret thing that I'm working on. So these are kind of already assigned, um, which is good. But I thought the pricing point was excellent. Um, And just to show you what I mean about the range, so those were with the mohair. They also do a floof which is with alpaca, again, made in Italy. This is Lana Grossa, but this one is 69% alpaca, 31% silk. So on face value, it looks very similar to the mohair, but it's another level of soft. So the reason I got this is because... um, This made my heart sing so much. When I was up the mountain, the first mountain in Innsbruck, I was wearing my cabled hat. And oh, I've been pushing this for years. And Matthew turned round and I was like, uh, I'd made him try this on. And I was like, it, the floof is amazing. And it's so lightweight, which I knew would be the thing that would get him into it. And when we were coming back down off the mountain, he said, oh, it might be time for me to upgrade my walking hat. And I was like, oh, trying to play it really cool. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, 
What what are you thinking of upgrading to? And then inside I'm going, let me make you something. Let me make you something. And he was like, well, I actually really like the floof hat that you made. Um, so I was thinking maybe you could make me a lightweight floof hat. And I was like, oh, really trying to keep my crap together. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, c- I could do that. Maybe... Maybe we should try and pick some yarn for you when we get to Salzburg. I'm not joking. We landed in Salzburg. We um, we dropped the hire car off and I marched him straight to the yarn shop. <laughs> I was like, right, let's pick yarn for your hat. <laughs> so that is why I got him the alpaca version of the floof because I got him to stand there and touch both. And he preferred the softness of the alpaca. And it's probably going to be a little bit warmer as well. But that will be mixed with the alpaca socks that I got for him from Lang Yarns. So whilst we were stood in the yarn shop, I got him to choose the colours and the softness that he wanted for his hat. So the alpaca sock is um, 70% alpaca, 30% nylon. And that is actually made in Peru and it's a six ply easy wash. And again, it's in like a denim blue colour, as is the floof. Um, What is key to him, because he goes up mountains a lot and he's got a trip coming up in May. The amount of weight that he can take in his kit really matters. See, I know the reason that he's chosen this is because he saw how light this hat was and so like when he's going up on the mountain every gram that you are not carrying counts and so what we've agreed is he actually wants two hats and he wants um one which would be a thicker version and so i could probably double up the strands of the alpaca socks and he wants one which is a single and what that means is he can take the really lightweight one right to the top of the mountain with him and what he tends to do is get so far up and then they pitch their tents and they leave most of their stuff in the tent overnight um, or during the day while he's walking and then he will have a heavier weight one which he can wear at night which will keep him really warm in the tent because you know we're talking about him being up a mountain in Scotland in May which is still really quite cold so I have got two hats to make him, and they will be knitted because they need to be as lightweight as possible. Um, crochet is denser and is going to make more weight. But, um, like, my husband asked me to make him a hat. Yes, I honestly feel like I have unlocked the next level of crafter. It's taken years to get to this point, and I am going to celebrate it. So, these yarns will be made up before mid-May for Matthew to have new hats to take up into the mountains. So happy I finally got through to him. Um, The other thing that I got for him is, again, he chose the colour. This was the only Austrian yarn that I could find and it is a blend of like a sandy brown colour, all the blues and a little bit of a mid-earthy teal. It's by a company called Fernavola. And it is Austrian yarn and it is made in Austria. And the mix is 60% superwash wool, 20% silk and 20% polyamide. Given that I got all the floof, um, the Lana Grossa floof, in the shop in Salzburg, they also had a floof which was hand dyed. They really don't do a lot of hand dyed in Austria, but the um, woman that runs the shop in Salzburg, I think is also the hand hour behind this and it is um, golden coppery orange tones gradient um, going into yellow and it is floof again and it is mohair silk and it's made by Volkastel which is the yarn shop that I went to in Salzburg and um, that I think may or may not be going in with my secret squirrel project as well. I got it as an option and then I found some of these other colours in in a yarn shop elsewhere, I think. So 
If not, it's going to get used because I'm so massively into like mohair silk at the moment. And then the last two things I picked up, I hadn't really intended on doing, but I got them in the yarn shop in Vienna. And I bought them because the yarn shop in Vienna is right next door. It's called uh, Volivian. And right next door, it's in, it's in the most beautiful building. And the building next door was a mid-grey colour with a peachy pink. And I really loved the colour combination. And when I went into Volivienne, they had similar tones. So I got a dark charcoal grey and a light um, kind of blossomy peachy pink to go together for a future design. And these are by Earth Yarns, U-R-T-H Yarns. I quite like them because they... Um, for each skein of yarn sold, they plant a tree in Africa in partnership with Trees for the Future. And I, I really quite like that. This is 100% ultrafine merino and it is beautifully soft. It's a standard fingering weight and it's just 50 grams, 200 um, metres. And I oh, just, I love the colours. So this is either going to come out as mittens or a cowl um, but I just the colour combination of these two together was just beautiful and um, I couldn't I couldn't really say no to them frankly well that was a lot wasn't it but I really um, I love buying yarn when I'm abroad I love that sense of place that you get I love being inspired by being abroad it like makes all of my little receptors go ping 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 and I was literally walking around taking photos of all the things. And it might have been like a set of traffic lights, some tiles, a building, some roof, a colour combination of something. But by the end of the holiday, my brain was just switching back on. And I was like, creativity was starting to flow again. And that's always dangerous when it's always matched with the yarn shop as well. So future designs coming in a very obvious colour palette for me. So that just leaves me with old news beats. Old news beats, quick news beats. <laughs> so that just leaves me with quick news beats. Um, and the only thing I need to tell you about is that global hookups are this weekend, like klaxon sound. Because I'm a week late um, with the podcast, that meant that the patron Zoom was um, on Monday, which means that our global hookup is on Saturday the 9th of April at 8pm BST and then again on Sunday the 10th at 9am BST. So hopefully you can come and join us, come and say hello, come and craft. I will have somebody with me so there will be two of us Certainly on the Saturday, don't know what's happening on the Sunday yet, but um, there will be two of us on the Saturday night doing the global hookup. Um, and just a quick reminder again that Claudia and I will be having our little Instagram live chat with a cup of tea, possibly a glass of wine for me, because it will be 8pm on Sunday the 10th and that will still be available on my grid as well. And hopefully if the audio is good, then it will be also put out as uh, an interview episode for audio. Right. Me and my little yarn babies are off. I need to go and take Matthew to the train station because he's off out having a curry with friends tonight. Lucky, lucky sausage. Um, and I need to go and put all my little yarn babies off upstairs in their proper rightful places and uh, crack on with my Frida shawl and get the border done for that and um, yeah have that ready to show you next month. Right lovely lot I hope you have a really fab month I hope it contains lots of crafting and sunshine and happiness. Lovely to be back lovely to feel refreshed after our holiday and I shall see you next month. Bye!